currently here we are working through an example of hypothesis testing for a two-sided alternative. So we have an, our taxi entrepreneur who basically rents out his taxis to several drivers. And what he's worried about is that random variable Q, which tells us what the hourly earnings hourly earnings are of his taxi drivers. Now, he's concerned about two things. If they're too low, then his drivers will go to another taxi entrepreneur and rent their taxi somewhere else. If they're too high, he thinks that really he should be charging them more. So really he thinks the sweet spot, and we'll stick that into the null hypothesis, is that the earnings should average, the expected value of the earnings, mu, should be equal to 20 pounds. Now, as he is concerned about those earnings either being too low because his drivers will leave, or too high, meaning he isn't charging enough, the alternative hypothesis is that mu is unequal to 20. He will take a sample of size 60, so he will ask 60 on drivers on 60 occasions, what is, say, your earning in the third hour of your, um, of your trip or of your day. And we need one more information. From long experience, he knows that the variance of earnings is equal to nine. So the standard deviation, so that's sigma squared the standard deviation will be equal to three. So let's think about the uh, decision rules. Uh, we want to think about different type of decision rules here. Yeah. And when we do hypothesis tests, there are three type of decision rules. They all depend on what level, significance level, we are choosing let's say we choose a significance level of five percent and of course you know that determines that the probability of making a type one error is five percent so the decision rule you can sort of immediately write down is that relating to a p-value because you can say reject so all the decision rules will start with reject h naught if and now the first decision rule is that p-value is smaller than alpha. And that's the first decision rule. Let's write here a little one. And then we will have two more decision rules. One involving the test statistic and then one involving the sample mean. Because what that entrepreneur will do is after taking a sample of 60 observations, he will calculate the sample mean. I'll leave open what that value will be because we should be able to um, uh, write down the decision rules, all the decision rules before you know what you get. So that was easy to write down in the p-value. And what about the test statistic. So the test statistic we will use in this occasion is the following. Firstly, we need to figure out what is the sampling distribution of Q bar. That's the sample mean. This is a particular observation, little Q bar. This is the random value Q bar. Therefore, it's capitalized, assuming that the central limit theorem kicks in with a sample size of 60, we can be fairly confident. we will have a variance of sigma squared over n, sigma squared over n, that is nine divided by 60, and that is 0.15 when you calculate that. So that's the variance. What about the expected value for Q bar? Well, we take our hypothesized value of 20. So all the following calculations are conditional on this null hypothesis being true, or are conditional on our assumption that the null hypothesis is true. So, if we have a normally distributed random variable, then we know we can standardize our 
sample mean by q bar minus that 20 divided by the standard error, which is going to be the square root of that. So it's the square root of 15. Square root of 0 0.15. Sorry. So that's our set statistic. That one here is going to be approximately standard normally distributed. So, and from that, we can write down our second decision rule. So let's do a little sketch for our standardized test statistic. So here's our distribution. This is going to be centered around zero. So if we are having a significance level of 5%, that means we want to reject our null hypothesis if our set statistic results in the 5% extreme values. And extreme here defi is defined by both tails because we are having a two-tailed test statistic. So what we are worried about is the set statistic falling into these two tails, where together the size of the tail, so this area plus this area should add to 5%. We divide that 5% equally between both, so that means the area here should be 0 0.025 or 2.5% or and here as well. So you can go to the standard normal table and find out what these values are. These values are negative 1.96 and plus 1.96. So if our set statistic, once we plug in our sample mean, if that is smaller than negative 1.96 or larger than 1.96, then we should reject H0. Okay, so reject H0 if set is smaller than negative 1.96 or set is larger than 1.96. Or sometimes you will then see if the absolute value of z is larger than 1.96. Okay, for st this two-tailed test statistic, you can simplify it to that. But that's only for a two-tailed test statistic. So that is our decision rule formulated in terms of z. But we can also formulate the decision rule in terms of q bar, our sample mean, we can write a test statistic reject H0 if Q bar is something. And again, we can perhaps already anticipate it's going to be if Q bar is smaller than a certain value or Q bar is larger than a certain value. And we need to figure out what value that is. So can we first work on this graphically? We have our distribution. Of q bar it's also normal so here we have q bar it's also normal but this is centered around our hypothesized mean of 20 so the question is what are these values in the q bar world which cut off five percent of the probability aggregated together so two and a half percent in each tail so, of course, you don't have a table where you could read that off. You had a table where we could read this value off here, 1.96. So, we'll use our, our translation formula. If z is equal to 1.96 and our test statistic as defined here. So, we can get q bar and this is now sort of a high value q bar let's call it h for high and q bar l for low so q bar h minus 20 divided by square root of 0 0.15 now when you calculate that what you get from here you can solve that for q bar h you will get 20.76 20 20 rounded to, to full pence. Okay, so that is going to be 
20.76. And then Q bar low, we can get from using this value here. So if set is equal to 1.96, then we can figure out what Q bar low should be. Q bar low minus 20 divided by square root of 0.15 should equal negative 1.96. And if you solve that for Q bar low, you get 19.24. So this value here is 19.24. And this means we can write down our third decision rule. Q bar, we reject H naught if Q bar is either smaller than 19.24 or larger than 20.76. So you can see that we can do all of this without actually knowing what Q bar is. I haven't given you any information about Q bar, but we can sort of prepare our test. We now know that this red area here, so to the left of this value, we reject or to the right of this value, we will also reject. So if our sample mean falls into that red area or the test statistic falls into this red area here, so if the sample mean falls into this red area, reject or reject okay or the test statistic the set test statistic falls into this area or our p-value is going to be smaller than alpha we will reject the null hypothesis let's use an example let's just say that value turned out to be 20.52 so 20 pounds and 52 pence that value would be uh, somewhere here 20.52 means it's not in the rejection region. We would not, we would not reject the null hypothesis. What would that mean for the set statistic? So the set value then would be, let's do that here, 20.52 minus 20 is 0 0.52 divided by the square root of 15. Oh, which is Calculate what that is. It would be one point three four. So that would be one point three four. And you can see, of course, set is also not in the rejection region. It's in the acceptance re or where we do not reject H naught. And of course, now we could calculate the p-value. The p-value of this test statistic is going to be the size of this area. But since we are dealing with a two-tailed test, we would have to add the size of this area. You can go to your table and figure out what the size of that area is. So let's figure out what the size of this area is. Negative 1.34, I read that off the table and I see it's nine, this is 0 0.0901. 0 0.0901. And this size will also be 0 0.0901. So the p-value here is going to be 0 0.1802. That means with neither of the three rules, we will reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is not smaller than 5%. It's 18%. So which of these rules you use really doesn't matter. You can use either of them if you do it correctly you will get the same decision with all of them.